really good question. Uh, how long or in what book uh, the Big Little Chicago? Back way back to the In what book will we find out in Big Little Chicago? Um, probably not until my year is one. Probably, actually, I'm not a lazy writer. Probably a <laughs> I think that will be a good uh, for the last of the, of the case file, so uh, I'll run with that one. So, I'm a little shame to that was the mid-20s here. Is that going to be significant? 
Should we just simply try to get the cast a spell out and use the name John Mark Tom? Yeah, well, that would be a big deal. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll have to see how that works out. Um, actually, the, the character is really, really interesting in the Mirror Mirror universe, uh, Mark Tom. And we'll be we'll seeing in a few books, but I didn't know anything. Back to that. Are any of my places like math places based on real places? No, except for the ones that are based on real places. <laughs> <laughs> for example, the Neil Museum, where I actually went to the Museum of Science and Technology, and there's a lot of people who actually have the Neil Museum Science and Technology Museum. Um, and the big aquarium, the big shed aquarium, is actually the Neil Museum, which um, it, where I got to go stand by the big window to look out on the big tank, and with the whales and dolphins going by, and so on, 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 um, just, just so you know, uh, if you're there and you ask them, hey, what would happen if these windows were broken? <laughs> no, I mean, like somebody shot them out or something. <laughs> 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 I don't know, I need to know a professional reason. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, not have a sense of humor. Just so you're aware. You know. um, right here. I think about writing a seventh book in the Alara series. If I go back to Alara, uh, it'll probably be, uh, well, it'll probably be years from now and I'll need to pay off my gambling debts or something, you know, a good reason. And, and I would probably go back, um, I would either go back a couple of generations in the future, uh, uh, and we're going to see a much seen monkeyer Alara after, uh, uh, after the guys on KB got through the mess of the place up. Uh, either that, or I'd also uh, take into consideration kind of writing the, the uh, incredible troublemaking A team of cursors that Aaron has to put up with, uh, uh, where you know one of them is a cam and one of them is a rot, and, 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 and so on. You know, they've kind of got a justice league of, 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 <laughs> of cursors causing trouble. But, but, but it wouldn't be, I mean, it, it wouldn't be a story that's on the same kind of, uh, you know, let's anime mountains and smash the world kind of scale that the, uh, the first one was. So, you know, I wouldn't want to disappoint my way back to that. Um, let me go over here. An anime, I mean, what about an anime or an animated movie or either series? I would be delighted with those because then they could pull up as much stuff as they want. And, I mean, really, it wouldn't really cost them any more than not pulling it out. Which makes it a major difference from, you know, television, uh, the way it's the way normally done. In, in my head, it's kind of an animated series anyway, uh, as I'm writing it. Um, and there are some moments where you can actually stop and say, oh my gosh, this is like an anime panel right here, what he's describing. And, and the answer to that is, yes. But, uh, what it is in my head, I just have to write it down that way. But let me, let me go over here, uh, in the Richard. Uh, you are expendable, sir. <laughs> Uh, everybody 
I just pick up on, I think all the major plot stuff that I've done, and pretty much somebody picked up on all of it. Nobody's put them all together. Um, but I mean, in, in each individual part, as any of you were talk about the future, you're going to have people who go, I call that, and they did. Uh, uh, I mean, they would be like wrong on like 90% of the rest. <laughs> but the part that they did. And, uh, uh, and it's actually impossible to put together a big story, too, because the guys who were researching the role playing game did and were writing it in the book. And I had to tell them, no, stop that! So <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll put that in the role playing book because they're giving things away that would be way more fun to get in the actual book. So don't do that, I'll, I'll, I'll scream. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone who makes the on or just really how you came about to create such a strong character? I mean, the whole series is based on it. Okay, so you want to get based on it. Uh, how did I go about creating this? Um, well, first of all, you have to understand that I created Dresden as an exercise in my writing a genre fiction novel class uh, in order to prove to my writing teacher how wrong she was about her life all her ideas of writing. I mean, she was she been trying to be very good writing advice for a long time. Program at OU's uh, 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 College of uh, Journalism uh, and the professional writing program there. And uh, she was trying to give me very good advice for a long time, which I've been ignoring because I have a bachelor's degree in English literature. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas she had merely published 40 novels. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, I've been arguing and arguing with her for a couple of years, and um, uh, uh, finally, I said, okay, one semester I said, okay, I, I'm just going to be a, I'm going to be her little writing monkey this semester. I'm going to do all of her little worksheets, I'm going to fill out all the little things, I'm going to follow this, this very artificial, very terrible uh, uh, process that she's trying to get us to, to get involved in, and I'm going to show her what terrible cookie cutter happened crap comes out of it. And, and that's when I wrote Stormfront. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I put it together from uh, from two sources. One, uh, classical long-term popular wizards, and two, long-term uh, 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 popular private And I, I said, okay, I started with I started with Merlin and uh, uh, and Sherlock, and those were the first two that I used. And uh, I started, you know, listing all the all the very artificial process, listing all the, the, the common traits between all these popular uh, literary wizards, and then all the common traits between the popular successful literary private eyes. And uh, uh, notice a couple of, of, of interesting crossovers. Uh, one, all the wizards uh, and private eyes, they really get all of their real power from knowledge. They go find things out. That's what really makes them dangerous. You know, they take uh, Gandalf Ager's sorrows. Not the fact that Gandalf had a couple of, had, had a, 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 a medium sized special effects budget and could throw fire and stuff at it. That wasn't any of the dangerous. Any dangerous was him rushing around the land, finding things out and going down into the, into the dark, musty vaults of, of Minas Tirith and, and, and looking up all these old records and realizing, well, wait a minute, this is how we killed the guy. Uh, that would be Gandalf Ager, not that he could do all this other stuff. Um, and private eyes kind of function in the same way. I mean, you can have a private eye who is, who is, who is scrappy and good in the fight. You, know, you can have somebody like Spencer who can box you right to the ground if you want to play that kind of game with him, or maybe just plug you if you, if you want to play rough. But that is not what really makes him dangerous. What makes him dangerous is his ability to go places and find things out. Now, whether they're going into a, 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 a literal underworld like the Mines of Moria, or whether they're going into a more metaphorical underworld like the, the, the underside of Boston crime scene, uh, that's what they do. Uh, uh, so I said, oh, okay, well, these are the things I want to put together. So you know, what else do I need for wizards? All wizards are grumpy. I'm going to put that in. Because <laughs> it's just true. Uh, uh, all private eyes are Malaby, as much as I can tell. All the ones are not the ones, and, 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 and they're also, they're both, they both fit into arrogance. Uh, uh, I mean, you look at somebody like Sherlock Holmes, who is you know, just a terribly arrogant character. He's so, occasionally so arrogant, he almost seems innocent of the fact that he was so arrogant. He's really smart. Um, so they said, okay, and so one of the other things about it, especially when looking at the hard work of American private eyes, you know, one of the things about these guys that make them able, uh, uh, that make them popular, make them long range characters. And, uh, uh, well, you know what? They will all dialogue to exactly the wrong people, exactly the wrong 